So we all know that replacing the thermal paste on a high-end gaming laptop yields some pretty impressive results. But what about the average Joe's laptop? Well, we're going to find out today. Okay, so just like we already mentioned, high-end gaming laptops do get a drastic benefit when replacing the stock thermal interface material for the CPU and the GPU. But what about something like our Acer Aspire 5? Well, I found the thing running pretty hot. I mean, it's quite literally a flamethrower. Not literally, that's Elon Musk's thing. But what it does do is generate quite a bit of heat because you're looking at a 15-watt i5-8250U CPU and a 25-watt GeForce MX150 on a single heat pipe with a single fan and single heatsink design, keeping it cool. Well, trying to anyway. So what we wanted to do was replace this thermal interface material on this laptop, document it, and see if there was any tangible difference and, well, real-world benefit for somebody who was willing to pop the bottom off of their laptop and do this themselves. Well, for the test, we used Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut Thermal Paste, which we find to be extremely which we find to be extremely high quality and has great thermal conductivity. Now, re removing the bottom of the laptop was extremely easy on the Aspire 5. It just had the retention screws and the bottom literally just pulled right off. I wish more laptop manufacturers had such a simple design. And even removing the heatsink assembly was exceptionally easy with four CPU screws for the CPU portion and two for the GPU portion, and then it literally just popped up and came right off. Of course, we had to clean it all up and then replace the TIM. I had to take a moment to take a look at the CPU and GPU and go, ooh, shiny. Okay, so let's put this heatsink back on. Now, before we did all of that, we did take some initial readings. We took a Cinebench score result, and we took readings from using IDA64 in the CPU stress test, and then a CPU plus GPU stress test to see how things fared. And of course, once we got done, well, we did the same thing again, and these are our results. Did we get a performance benefit? First, we take a look at Cinebench. Well, unfortunately, no. I mean, unless you consider one point on uh, the multi, or two points rather, on the multi-core and actual benefit, we actually saw no benefit here. But let's take a look at something else. Let's look at the temperatures. Now, I have to mention that these thermal tests were taken 15 minutes in, and the core clock test were take, readings were taken about 15 minutes in of running IDA64 with CPU and then CPU plus GPU. That way we could give it time to normalize because of the clock fluctuations and temperature fluctuations that laptops undergo in their early boosting points. So what we saw here was the CPU plummet from 74 degrees Celsius down to 60 degrees. That's a huge difference. That's 14 degrees Celsius and nothing was delit. There was nothing crazy. I mean, it was already, there's no, you know, IHS on these chips, but it was just a thermal interface change. So what about the CPU plus the GPU? That saw an, a, a just as substantial of a drop where the CPU was running at 82 degrees Celsius and the GPU running at 75 degrees Celsius beforehand, whereas afterwards both ran at 70 degrees Celsius. Not only running much cooler, but running significantly quieter. And as far as clock speeds go, well, we gained about 200 megahertz on the CPU only test, but in the GPU plus the CPU, the CPU stayed about the same, and the GPU gained about 50 megahertz, which on Pascal architecture isn't noticeable. So there's no real performance benefit there. But something to keep note though, was during the Cinebench test, it would peg up to 99 degrees Celsius and then drop down as the core clock reduced and the fan speed increased. Whereas afterwards, it only peaked up to 68 degrees Celsius during a Cinebench run. So that's something to keep in mind. It definitely allows the CPU to be more aggressive short term, so opening programs can feel a little bit snappier. And I would have to say at the end of the day, yeah, it is worth doing with some caveats. Of course, you've got to be willing to do it. Uh, you know, if you're savvy enough and you've got a friend with a laptop, you might want to consider doing it for them. Unless you don't like them, of course, but that's up to you. So we found the results interesting enough to share. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have anything to add to it, please make sure to do so in the comment section below. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and we'll catch you in the next one.